Well, the idea first came to me um, when I was attending a gay rights conference um, in Vilnius, in Lithuania, which is one of the countries that features pretty heavily in the documentary. And a lot of that um, conference surrounded um, a new EU directive that at that stage hadn't even been proposed. It was still in the process of being drawn up and indeed it wasn't even certain that it would be uh, proposed as part of the, the EU's legislative programme. Um, but the, the directive um, would make discrimination on the grounds of homosexuality illegal across the board, um, which is something that is still not the case in many uh, of the EU's member states. Um, and that, to me, was quite shocking and, and disturbing. Yes, in the UK, for example, um, that is the case, and in other Western European countries, but particularly in the newer member states, um, the former Eastern Bloc countries that joined, um, you know, sexuality was not being treated the same as race or gender. And for that to be the case at an EU level, that sexuality was not considered in the same light as race or gender, uh, made me um, quite angry and it shocked me and it, it provoked me to do something about it. And that's what this film uh, is about, really. Um, but while we were in Lithuania, the conference was actually attacked by uh, a group of neo-Nazis. Um, one of the bars that was part of the, uh, the, the conference uh, programme where events and talks were being held um, was smoke-bombed one night. And apparently this is quite common in Lithuania. Um, uh, well, that's what I was told at the time. Obviously now, after the film, um, I've come to, to realise that unfortunately this is the case in many Eastern European countries that homophobic attacks um, are actually quite common um, and go unpunished in, in many cases. Um, and so that really inspired me to do more again, as I say, and on the kind of two levels, if you like. The first level was the legislative issue um, that sexuality um, uh, was still not being taken uh, uh, as an important issue and uh, the second aspect of it if you like was this kind of homophobia that exists on the streets sadly in in many countries across Europe um, and I'd seen a couple of other films about similar topics uh, to the one to, to be on the pink curtain um, but they focused heavily on gay pride marches in particular um, I wanted to kind of take the film away from that context, really, to try and move it on. Because the films that I saw, basically the premise of them was, well, homophobia is a problem in Eastern Europe. Um, but, you know, I'm OK, Jack, here in the West. Um, and I don't think that's the case either. And what my film tries to do is um, show that homophobia does exist everywhere really that homophobia is very different in nature between the east and eastern and western europe of course um, you might say that homophobia in the west is much more private um, whereas it is organized um, and quite blatant um, in in eastern europe you have mainstream political parties that are openly homophobic and and that is accepted by a lot of, of a lot a, well most of society in these countries um, so yeah, they're very different, but it still existed here. And I was angered by this kind of condescending approach, really, that um, homophobia only exists in, in certain parts of Europe, um, namely Eastern Europe. So what the film does, it kind of holds Eastern Europe up as a kind of mirror image, as I suppose, um, and makes many parallels between East and West to show that actually there aren't that many differences, that homophobia exists everywhere, and makes the case for uh, European Union legislation that is supranational, that is transnational, um, that has to be applied in all of these countries.